hi yet another important video from ushendra's engineering tutorial it's a laplace transform of another important basic function uh, cos function and a sine function so in order to obtain the laplace transform of a sine and a cosine function we have to know something about euler's identity so what is euler's identity it says euler's identity it says e rise to j theta can be written as cos theta plus j sin theta uh, in the same way let it be equation 1 in the same way e rise to minus j theta will be cos theta minus j sin uh, theta let this be it's a second identity okay so adding this equation equation 1 and 2 what we have is guys these two will be added these two which are in the LHS will be added like uh, e rise to j theta plus this one plus e rise to minus j theta on the RHS what we have is so adding this term and this one so we have a negation over here so plus j sin theta and minus j sin theta that will be cancelled we are left with cos theta plus cos theta so that gives rise to 2 cos theta which implies cos theta will be equal to e rise to j theta plus e rise to minus j theta upon 2 this is the identity okay so while uh, evaluating the Fourier transform and Laplace transform of uh, sine and cosine functions we have to convert uh, these cosine function and sine function into its Euler's identity this one and then we have to proceed the uh, further analysis okay this is a very important relationship Euler's identity like we can substitute cos theta and sine theta with these exponentials okay on the other hand what we have is um, subtracting these two equations subtracting equation 1 and 2 what we have is in the LHS we have e rise to j theta minus e rise to minus j theta will be equal to guys when we subtract uh, these two uh, positive over here converts into negative and negative we have this will be converted into positive no let me write down like uh, cos theta cos theta plus uh, j sine theta is the first equation minus of this equation again cos theta minus j sine theta and uh, this negative will be applicable on this one and this one and uh, in that process right this negative will be applicable on this one and this one so this becomes negative uh, when this is applied and this becomes positive and uh, under such condition plus cos theta minus cos theta gets cancelled we this will be cancelled and we will be left with uh, j sin theta plus j sin theta twice of j sin theta which says uh, sin theta theta is equal to e rise to j theta minus e rise to minus j theta by 2j guys this is another important uh, uh, Euler's identity we cannot proceed the Laplace transform analysis simply with sine and cosine function we have to convert that into these Euler's identities and then we have to carry the analysis okay so this is what So let's see the application of it. Okay, just now we have uh, uh, obtained a relationship uh, cosine function and a sine function in terms of Euler's identity. Uh, let's see if what is the use of uh, that conversion. Okay, it may be like uh, x of t may be cos omega t u of t, and uh, it will be asked to evaluate the Laplace transform of this function or a Fourier transform of this function at this point it's a Laplace transform of this cosine function so what is the Laplace transform ideally it's a the Laplace transform is x of a given x of t is multiplied with e rise to minus st 
and integrated with respect to t and so we have dt okay so here coming back to this one uh, the cosine function which we want to derive the laplace transform of is uh, written as the laplace transform laplace transform of uh, cos omega t u of t will be integral cos omega t e rise to minus st dt so guys uh, limit, we have an integration and what will be the limits of integration so we need to have some limits of integration that can be found out from the given uh, equation itself x of t is given as cos omega t into u of t uh, we have some significance of this multiplication these two cos function is multiplied with a step function step function which i have uh, uh, explained previously in my previous uh, videos so cos omega t multiplied with uh, step function u of t so what it is we have some significance of that one here it is like this so uh, we have a cos function like this one extending from minus infinity to it's a cos function because it's a cos function it goes on extends and uh, either side also it extends either side and uh, step function we have this one we have a step function like this one uh, which commences after t equal to 0 uh, let it be a unit step function it uh, commences soon after t equal to 0 with a uh, amplitude 1 and extends up to infinity and when these two functions when these two signals are multiplied even this function will be existing only after because this one this even this function will be existing after t equal to 0 and extends up to infinity when these two are multiplied this uh, prior to t equal to 0 it's a 0 and so all these signals will be 0 we have existing uh, cosine function exists only after t equal to 0 when the cosine function is multiplied with uh, step function u of t okay this is the significance and so with this one see it's a uh, t the signal exists only after t equal to 0 and extends up to infinity this gives uh, the limits of integration like uh, t to infinity so this is the significance of that multiplication uh, this is what it happens so the limits of integration are 0 to infinity and uh, we have cos omega t uh, it's a laplace transform is uh, the laplace transform of cos omega t is multiplied with uh, the function is multiplied with e raised to minus st and integrated with respect to t okay this, now this has to be converted into euler's identity like uh, uh, which is equal to integral 0 to infinity as it is uh, this uh, cos omega t should be converted into euler's identity such as uh, e rise to j omega t it's a theta like previously it's theta similar to theta e rise to j theta similarly e rise to j omega sorry omega t plus e rise to minus j omega t upon 2 this whole function is multiplied with e rise to minus s t and integrated with respect to T, so dt what we have is so another simplification over here integral 0 to infinity as it is taking out this uh, half outside the integration what we have is half over here uh, and multiplying this one this should be multiplied right so e rise to j omega t into e rise to minus s t and uh, plus e rise to minus j omega t into e rise to minus s t uh, this whole function is integrated with respect to t this is what it happens okay so continuation is uh, half as it is integral 0 to infinity a small modification over here taking out exponential as common and uh, power negative as common e rise to minus of uh, minus is taken out and s negative is left over here minus j omega into t t also as common uh, plus negative as common from here i mean exponential is common from here e rise to minus of uh, uh, negative as common negative is taken out as common from these two so we will be it will be positive s plus j omega t and the whole function is integrated with respect to t d t okay so this is what uh, is it correct yeah it's correct so on the other hand proceeding ahead proceeding ahead what we have is integral 
e raised to ax dx, the same function over here. So what we have is half as it is. So integrating this function, what we have is with respect to t, so this becomes the constant over here and that comes down. So the resultant will be e raised to minus of uh, s minus j omega t upon this is uh, treated as a constant so that comes down minus of uh, s minus j omega okay so plus we have a positive over here e rise to minus of uh, s plus j omega into t upon the whole function comes down minus of s plus j omega comes as it is so uh, we are missing something yeah it's limit of limits of integration and that should be 0 to infinity the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is infinity so what we have is continuation half as it is so plugging in uh, the lower limit and upper limits over here this will be the upper limit and this will be the lower limit so plugging in these values in the place of t what we have is guys uh, in this expression minus of uh, s minus j omega in the denominator as it is so plugging in the upper limit e rise to e rise to minus of uh, s minus j omega into infinity okay uh, for the lower, lower limit it will be e minus e rise to minus of uh, s minus j omega into zero okay so plugging in uh, upper limit and lower limit for this expression this comes and we have plus over here it is a uh, uh, the same procedure for that one we have a uh, minus of uh, s plus j omega in the denominator as it is e rise to minus of s plus j omega into infinity for the upper limit minus e rise to because i don't have space and this will be zero uh, every, any, everything will be zero it's a zero over here okay so guys uh, have a careful watch what happens is minus of s minus j omega as it is in the denominator look carefully this entire term will be infinity so e rise to minus infinity that will be zero so we are having zero over here minus this will be zero this entire term will be zero e rise to zero that will be one okay so proceeding ahead what we have is by minus of s plus j omega okay so this entire term will be minus infinity again so that will be 0 uh, minus e rise to minus uh, 0 that will be 1 so we are left like this right so hope it's clear for you which is equal to half outside this one it's uh, from the beginning we have half over here so multiplying this and guys something can be taken out as common no it's zero so this negative this negative and this negative cancel gets cancelled here this one and this negative and this negative gets cancelled okay so a small further simplification over here what we have is a minus b uh, no uh, taking out taking out the uh, lcm like uh, simplifying this one what we have is in the denominator s minus j omega into s plus j omega okay and uh, cross multiplying cross multiplying what we have is s plus j omega plus cross multiplying s minus j omega this is what it happens and uh, for the proceeding further what we have is so guys watch carefully uh, is the values plugged in properly yes it's plugged in properly uh, upper limit being infinity and lower limit being zero e rise to minus infinity is always uh, zero uh, keep that in mind why because uh, we come across that simplification in many derivations okay so now this one continuation laplace transform of uh, cos omega t u of t continuation will be equal to uh, one upon two as it is it's applicable to the entire equation okay something gets cancelled over here this uh, plus j omega and minus j omega gets cancelled and uh, s plus s one is plus one is that will be two s this is the simplification and guys watch carefully a minus b into a plus b okay it's like uh, a minus b into a plus b it's uh, uh, a square minus 
b square this is what it happens and uh, in this expression this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled we are left with uh, s by s uh, j imaginary term and omega also that will be square no let me simplify it okay uh, because of this j square it will be minus omega square okay so further on s by s square plus omega square okay laplace transformers cos omega t u of t will be equal to s by s square plus omega square this is uh, important relationship and remember these two are laplace transform pairs like uh, laplace transform of uh, cos omega t u of t will be s, s upon s square plus omega square and the inverse laplace transform of this one will go back to this one so these two are known as uh, um, laplace transform pairs okay so this is what it happens guys if you find this useful please subscribe my channel ushendra's engineering tutorials and uh, stay home stay safe